Here's an interesting Cardano fact for you. Did you know that it is named after the 19th century mathematician Ada Lovelace? That's why you see Ada in brackets after the name. Now, Cardano has been receiving a lot of attention recently across the social media world in regards to becoming a more serious threat to Ethereum. Basically, Cardano is a eco-friendly transaction validator and it has great upside potential because of that in today's chart of the day i wanted to have a look at the technical analysis and see where it's going to go next hello i'm stephen ho trader and founder of the stop hunter <laughs> So before we can carry on, a risk warning for you to pay close attention to. The content in this video is not investment advice, so please seek the advice, help of financial professionals or financial advisors before investing and trading. And trading and investing involves a high degree of risk and your money is at risk, so be very careful. So with that out the way, let's get on with the analysis. Now diving straight into the line chart for Cardano, it's a weekly one and its price data comes from Coinbase Exchange. Now there's a reason for me doing that and it goes back to about March of this year and it's all to do with liquidity and ease of trading. Once these cryptos get put onto the more mainstream exchanges it becomes easier to trade. So it's less data here for the moment to look at but it's probably better data. Uh, to use and diving into the numbers what have we got well we can see the lows just above the one area and up to those highs at 2.3 struggling around the 1.38 at the moment there seems to be a lot of noise through that zone 1.38 1.4 the key 38.2 percent Fibonacci line is back just over one and a half and then we got the 61.8 at 1.8 and then it's back on to the high. So it's still got a little way to go to get to the highs before it can break out more significantly higher. So we've seen the run up in sort of April, May time, the pullback, the sort of slower downside consolidation, and it's now thinking of where to go next. So let's dive into the Heiken Ashi chart for a bit more detail. So on the one day Heiken Ashi chart, well, going straight to the signals, both are bullish down the bottom there. The RSI crossover with the moving average and the regression. Looking at the volatility, that's the standalone red line in the middle there. Just falling off a little bit uh, you know, as prices you know, might just calm down. Now going back on top of the price, we can see a, you know, a rise up from mid-July. It's within the band strategy set up there so pretty neutral at the moment and testing those top areas we've seen a downtrend in price from mid may but a bit of consolidation and a bounce back it's sort of got to get through top of that band area uh, to get exciting in the shorter term and the renko chart was that telling us well, again, both the signals at the bottom, the amended DMI and the regression, both bullish, go to the price. And it's just trying to crack up through the bands there, the orange lines. It's above the moving average, the short-term moving average. Price-wise, you know, that 23.6 Fibonacci line playing a bit of a stopping game to the price at the moment if you can get through there 38.2 percent Fibonacci line at 1.57 then the next key number is around about 1.9 which is a 61.8 Fibonacci line where you can see a lot more price noise it doesn't really want to get past there or well, not since you know May June time and if it can, then we could see it go back towards those highs of 2.44. And if it can break up through that high, 2.8 could be the next target. But overall, we've seen like that price coming off. Gone through a consolidatory period for the last few months. Got the support around the one area. 
again, if it broke down through that one area and continue that longer term trend, we're looking at 0 0.65 and 0 0.45 according to the Fibonacci numbers there. But it's got a feel of a bit more bullishness in it in the shorter term and looking to crack up through, like I say, that 1.36, 1.37 area before going any further. So let's move on to the summary and tidy things up. I've got to say, it's very hard making any predictions, whether fundamental or technical, in the world of cryptocurrencies. And really, if you're doing this, you know, a systematic approach, maybe with back tested numbers to make the decision making easier, is a lot more helpful. But on today's analysis, overall, I'm going to give it a weak bullish feel. There's a lot of support noise around that one area. And it's looking like it's trying to bounce the rest of the cryptocurrency complex is starting to feel a bit more bullish once more therefore giving it a weak bullish overall uh, position but focusing on the targets you know it's not a bad um, up and downside actually really in terms of risk return 2.1 and 4.3 to 1 to the upside and 2.7 and 3.6 to the downside so if you could be an options trader and trade a you know, straddle position on there, then that would be a good trade. But unfortunately, we can't, and we've got to pick one way or the other. So overall, I'm going to give it a weak bullish uh, recommendation. So Cardano, can it catch up with Ethereum or even take it over? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me also know where you think the price is going. Is it bullish, bearish? Is it just tagging along with the rest of the cryptocurrency crowd? I say, let me know. And if you've liked today's technical analysis and want to learn more about what I do, I'll put some links in the description to below for you to follow, which can help you out there. So if you liked today's video, please give us the thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell buttons to receive further notification of content such as this when I produce it and all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching, good luck with the trading and I'll see you in the next video.